Last year, travelling through Vietnam and Cambodia, we took a lot of internal flights, and for these we were restricted to 7 kilos in hand baggage only. Otherwise you had to pay quite a lot of money for any hold baggage or anything overweight. I ended up carrying just under 3 kilos. I decided even then that that was too much. Because sometimes I had to carry the stuff around all day in between flights and leaving hotels. So I've trimmed it down even further to one compact little day sack which is actually less than half full. Allowing me plenty of space for souvenirs, water etc. So let's have a look to see what we've got. So there we are, all packed, ready for three weeks going to Laos and Myanmar, previously known as Burma. However, what does it weigh? Well, the proof is in the pudding. So let's switch the scales on and zero them. Lift up the bag and pop it on. 1.277 kilos, 1,277 grams. So the question is, what's in the bag? Well, let's have a little look. One pair of underpants. One cotton linen mix long sleeve shirt. One pair of shorts. One smaller bag. One mobile phone. What's in the smaller bag? Well, let's see if I can open it up one handed. So there's my travel wallet. I've had it since I was 10, so I can't really swap it for a smaller, lighter one. In it, there is one needle and some thread, three cards, and a lucky dollar. My grandmother gave me that about 20 years ago, and she said, that will get you out of trouble in case you ever need it because everybody takes dollars. Okay, Granny. So we have in here my Dragon Pass, my Premier Dragon Pass to get me into the airport lounges. We have here there's a debit card, but that would be a credit card when I was traveling in case I need to book a flight or a car and my Caxon card. This is a pre-loading card that you put money on and can take out without fees anywhere. So what else we got? Flexible silicon disc, that's a travel plug. We've got earphones to help me sleep and filter out the noise in a noisy hotel or on the airplane and a pair of headphones so I can listen to my music from my phone on the plane. I haven't gone for the wireless ones because they weigh too much and they keep running out. Here we've got a couple of impregnated wristbands to keep the bugs off, that's my insect repellent. I've got one charger cable for my phone. I've got eight paracetamol, eight ibuprofen and eight diarrhea tablets. These are good, this is body wash and clothes washing laundry sheets. So these you use to wash everything. There's a small can of deodorant, and that's not for me, that's for the other passengers on the plane. And a travel plug, this is a two pin for use in Southeast Asia or Europe. It takes two USB cables, and that's it for the bag. The only other thing is my phone. The Moto G9 Power, which is brand new. Is this the best travel phone ever invented? Who knows? But I'll tell you what, it's really promising to me, so I went out and bought it the moment it was released. Now normally, the only time I buy a phone is when I run over or otherwise destroy a phone that I've got on contract. And I pay very little for a contract, we're talking a tenner a month. So, why did I go for this? Well, first of all, it's got a massive battery. This will last me for about two or three days unused, or used barely. But I can go for a whole day filming constantly, using the GPS, taking photos, listening to a bit of music, etc. So that's really good. It's got a really good front and rear camera as well. The rear camera can be um, set, the default is 16 megapixels. It can go up to 64 megapixels, which means I could then zoom in four times 
and still have 16 megapixels so I won't have an awful image. The video is really good on it, the camera is really good on it anyway. Also obviously being a phone you can now put your boarding cards, you can put all your trip details and your memberships and this that and the other on it. You've got your full connectivity and I'd get, I'd get a um, SIM card wherever I go abroad. But going on apps here I've got my Dragon Pass which will guess, get me into the airport lounges. I've got TripIt where I store everything, Booking.com, uh, all my bank accounts, Caxton as well, so I can keep on my, on my account balance. So I've got all of that as well. Uh, it is showerproof, it's not waterproof sadly, that would help. And it doesn't have an optical zoom, which would also be really cool. But other than that, it's a cracking little phone. Now, it's quite large, and it's quite heavy. That is a bit of a drawback when you go on ultralight travelling. What we really want to know though is how much it weighs. So, zero the scales. Place it on with the card in 230 grams. Now that's quite heavy, but it's a large phone as we can see 230 grams. But because of the massive battery in there, I don't have to carry a power bank to recharge during the day, so that saves me a good bit of weight, even though I had a small one. I don't have to carry an additional camera, which is what I'm filming on right now. That's got a fair weight, being a waterproof one. So I don't need either of those. I don't need to carry the Kindle. So I've already saved myself quite a bit of weight there. So there we go. Less than a kilo and a half for everything I need to go around Southeast Asia. But no towel, you say? Well, I'll get those in the hotel. Or I can drip dry. But you've only got a shirt and a pair of shorts and a pair of pants spare. Yep, I'm also wearing some, which I will take off and wash each night. But, what about money? Well, that's in my money belt. But what about socks? I only need them for the flight because somewhere hot like that, I'm wearing travel sandals. So, the question is, seriously? Can you travel for three weeks around a hot climate like that? Yes, I can. Because, I only need to survive for 24 hours. And if I'm wearing my hat and my money belt, and a pair of shorts, and a shirt, and a pair of pants, I'm fine. I've still got a full set in reserve.